I'm not going to mince words here. And I know the word masterpiece is flung around way too often. But Across the Spider-Verse is a bona fide masterpiece. This is visually, this is unlike any other comic book film or animation film I've ever seen. And I know that last year I said the same thing about GDT's Pinocchio because Pinocchio just looked so good. He did a stunning job with Pinocchio. Guillermo del Toro did. But this one outshines everything I've ever seen on the big screen. I was completely mesmerized by how great this film looked. Looks, it's just a treat for the eyes. I mean, so it starts with this vignette. It uh, starts with like, I think that's like seven to 10 minutes in the beginning. That has one aesthetic. It felt like my brother's like He-Man back in the day. It felt like the, if you've ever seen He-Man before or the Thundercats, I don't know. It just felt like that, of course, upgraded. And it felt like graffiti come to life, like a live action graffiti and comic book. It felt so 4D. It, I can just imagine that this film on 3D would look exceptional. I am, I am stunned by how great this film is. You're never bored with it, especially visually. The plot is great, the story is great, it's relatable and that whole bit. But just visually, just visually, I can't believe how great that this film is. The animators did a fantastic job. I think that this is the best animated movie of all time. I think this is the best comic book movie of all time. That could be a stretch. I know a lot of people like The Dark Knight. A lot of people like Toby, Toby Maguire's era of Spider-Man. I know there's a lot to feast on, but this, wow, Sony, Sony is really doing a great job with this property. I am stunned. And the crowd, this was almost a sold out crowd. I saw it in Dolby. I want to see it in IMAX too, to compare. It's interactive because the audience was really in there. They were responding to the Easter eggs. I think this was a crowd of Spider-Man fans uh, because some things went over my head and a lot of people in the crowd were really responsive to some things that I missed. So I think even if you're not a fan of superhero films, I think you will be godsmacked at how beautiful this film is. It felt like a live action pop-up book, like a magazine or a comic book come to life. It feels literally like a live action comic or a graffiti come to life. And you're never going to be bored with the visuals because the aesthetic continually advances at every turn. Like the first vignette of, about Gwen's, a little backstory about what Gwen has been up to for about seven to 10 minutes or so. And then the aesthetic changes and then it changes again. It's just, here's another thing that blew me away. This film is very inclusive without pandering. It's just telling a story and it's not trying to say, oh, I'm going to hit this demographic. I'm going to hit this demographic. It's not trying to target you in some political way. It's just, it's just inclusive. And I think a lot of these filmmakers can learn a lot about this because the pandering is not organic. We want a good story and we want it to be inclusive so that everyone can enjoy it. That's, that's really it. I know we want everybody to feel seen on the screen, but not in a way that is so preachy and, and uh, pandering. At any rate, 
these animators beautifully designed these people of color in the most beautiful way. I was mesmerized. I cannot believe how beautiful this film is. And AMC, so a couple of things about my experience. I saw it in, AM, in Dolby at AMC. They're giving away posters. Definitely grab a poster. I can't wait to frame mine. So they're giving away posters. Uh, there, it, it, this is, there is going to be a continuation. This is part two of a continuation, which will be beyond the spider verse, which is coming next March. So we don't have to wait a long time. So that's coming. Wow. Imagine that it would get three Oscars for best animated film. Wow. That would be something history. Um, so the ending, the ending, which I don't know. There were a group of people that a group of viewers in the audience who were like stunned at the ending. They were like, that's it. Like, I guess that's a cliffhanger. And uh, then there was a, a beat for a couple of seconds and then the crowd applauded. So, and then the cameo, there is a cameo in the film and they like, that was a little lukewarm, but people did clap. So that was, uh, there were a couple of times where this particular audience did applaud. There were a couple of times it was light. And oh, a lot of people waited around for a mid credit scene or an end credit scene. There is one, but it's not really a scene. It's just like a notice to let us know that beyond the universe, beyond the universe, that beyond the Spider-Verse is coming. It didn't say when. And then it says that Miles Morales will be back. So that was like the experience of it all. It's the best comic book movie, the best animated film, the best movie of 2023, hands down. So far, it's the best movie. Like craftsmanship, it's untouched, unmatched in the crafts department. Unmatched so far this year. Best movie of 2023. It is undoubtedly going to win the Oscars. With what slate we have in animated films, Elemental is not going to get it. The Kraken thing is not. Mario Brothers, like, no. This is going, this is a shoe-in for best animated film, hands down. And I wonder, had this come out last year or if GDT's Pinocchio came out this year and they competed against each other, I think this would win hands down. There's nothing like this film. And I think it set the bar for future animated films. If they don't clear it, if they don't clear this bar... I think we're going to be completely bored, especially with the way animated films are this day with pandering to all of these different audiences instead of organically reaching out to all of us. At any rate, I cannot recommend this film enough. And do you have to see Into the Spider-Verse to get it? I think it helps. I just saw that the other day. I think it helps. I really don't think it's required, though, the way it tells the story. But again, if you are unfamiliar with Spider-Man, the, the different multiverses, you might get a little lost, but it, it doesn't stay long. Like it pulls everyone in because the story is so relatable and the story is really easy to follow. And you're never bored because of what you're you're looking at it. It's just like an, a visual treat, every frame. And it's so different. Like, that's the thing. Like, it's not like, I hate to just talk about uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, but that looked like a mess on screen. It was so much going on that I think your eyes could easily get distracted by Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. But with this one, it changes so often, but it's so beautiful to look at and so eye-popping that you can't look away. It's not disturbing or distracting the way I think, for me, Quantumania was. So, 
best movie of 2023. If you can see it on the biggest screen you can find because they're going to lose. Here's the thing. I understand where Tom Cruise is coming from when he says, you know, the we need more premium screens like we really do because these films, some of these films are shot with, you know, IMAX technology. We want to see it in that format. This film, I think we need to riot <laughs> because it's going to lose some premium screens to the Transformers. Now, I understand Transformers deserves to be on premium screens too. But I don't know. I think you you I think you don't have to see this in IMAX and Dolby, but I think it's highly recommended to see it on the biggest screen you can find a premium screen. And it's probably going to be like that for Transformers, but if it came down to it, if I had to choose between Transformers and this, seeing it on a premium screen, I think I would choose this every time. At any rate, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is in theaters now. Treat yourself.